Hello and welcome everyone to a new episode of Light Talk. Thank you so much for joining me, Rachel Valerie Doe, here in our studio at ICTA School. How are all of you today? It's a wonderful sunny spring day here in Jakarta and it's busy as always with the students finally coming into school. Including here at ICTIS, students are just coming in both primary and secondary and it's a joy to have them here. On today's episode of Light Talk, we will talk about a very interesting topic that might pique the interest of both parents and students. It's about college. Now, in this era, you might think, is college still worth it? You might think about this argument before or heard about it before with somebody else talking about it, especially in this pandemic, people might reconsider about entering college. Now, before we dive into this discussion, I would like to welcome a very special guest who just so happens to be an expert in this topic. Please welcome our very own ICTUS family member, Miss Nalia. Miss Nalia, are you there? Hello. Hello, Valerie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet nice you all. Nice to meet you, Miss. So, could you please introduce yourself to our audience? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nalia, and I'm working here at our beloved ICTA School as a school counselor for ICTA South Secondary. Now, Miss Nalia, why did you decide to be a school counselor? So, I took psychology as my major. And I've always been interested in developmental psychology, mm -hmm. educational psychology, as well as counseling, mainly counseling, actually. So working at a school allow me to cultivate all the areas in psychology I'm most interested in. I applied for the position of school counselor almost two decades ago and still loving doing this until now. I see. So it's very obvious that this is your passion. But what are your goals and aspirations as a school counselor here at ICTUS, especially since um, you're focusing on the secondary? All counseling process should aim toward the same goal, actually. Mm. Helping the counselee to utilize their potentials to deal with challenges in life. So as a school counselor, that's what I keep in mind as I do my work to help my students recognizing their potentials and manage those potentials to deal with challenges in their own respective contexts. Okay, now, since you pay close attention to the children or let's say teenagers, now from your experience and observation, what are the main characteristics of this generation's youth? Because we can see, obviously, in each era, there are many cultural changes, resets, and it definitely affects teenagers these days. Now, what's your um, experience? What, what do you see uh, as these children's main characteristics that makes them stand out? These kids uh, have uh, global perspectives over issues in life. I see. A lot more than generations before them. Growing up in internet era makes them this way. Uh, they're also open, yeah. very... Um, also very technologically savvy, of course, um, and very independent in learning as well. Now, internet unfortunately also nurtures them to be very quick to react and often impatient. I see. But they also have wider social connections uh, from multiple internet platforms uh, they've grown up with, although often lack of that. Now, this generation, I'd say, is fully ready to live and function in the near coming IoT. Oh, okay. Now, but regarding their image or notorious um, label, some people might say that the digital era, these children are lazy or self-entitled even because everything is ready for them. You can grab anything you want from the internet you can search for any answers you want from the internet and so on so everything is just quick and ready for them so many people might think that they don't want to work hard they're lazy they're self-entitled but from your observation as a professional do you think this is true first of all all of us are born self-centered to begin with as a baby uh, you can use the term self-entitled if you like yeah uh, as we grow older, uh, we learn how to live and work with others uh, mm -hmm. and that tendency of it that 
knowing that life is not just about me, 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 me. So um, self entitlement probably is not necessarily the sin of this particular generation. Uh, just really a normal process of growing from immaturity towards maturity. Now, all generations also, uh, this is actually scientifically proven, that each generation tends to see the next generation as self-entitled, um, as they tend to see them uh, as living an easier life uh, compared to their former self. Now, the truth is, uh, if you look at everything uh, closely, then you will see that each generation has its own unique challenge and benefits of the mm -hmm. time they're living in. Now, lazy, that's another debatable term. Mm. Some areas, I actually see them work harder than some of their predecessors. And these kids grow up in the area, uh, in the era where everything is set to be as efficient and effective as possible. So they're used to such system and they expect that as a general rule. So again, uh, you can call it lazy or you can call it efficient and effective. I guess that depends. I I most definitely agree with you, Miss Nalia. It really depends on people's perspective if you think about it. Some people might think they're lazy, but in another sense, they're act they actually have to keep up with all the knowledge that's been um, accumulated up to this point, right? Mm -hmm. That's why they do need the technology to keep up, so to speak. It's, it really depends on what people think and how people approach to the idea of children living in a digital era. Now, let's dive deeper into our discussion. There might be some noises out there that says, you know, everything is available for us to study and learn in the internet. And um, it's not necessary to pursue a higher education. Now, what do you think? Is higher education still important even in this era? Oh, I think education is always important in any era. And whenever we have an opportunity of pushing education to the highest possible level, I think would be more beneficial, I think, than it costs us. And so I do think even in this information era where everything is available, there are so many things that higher education uh, has to offer for us, although sometimes in the ways that we didn't really expect before. Okay. Now, but these days, a lot of people have proven to be successful in life, even without a college degree. With that in mind, it begs the question, is going to university or college still worth it? Because you can see a lot of people, well, not maybe a lot, but there are some very prominent figures out there, like um, that Teddy Kobuzier uh, celebrity. Mm -hmm. I remember he said once before that going, going to college is not absolutely necessary. You can learn a lot of things independently. And I think in one side, it may be true, but does that cut off the relevance of university or college? So it begs the question really, is going to college still worth it? Now, what do you think, Ms. Nalia? There's a lot of people actually uh, globally uh, recognize being very successful in multiple areas. You can add Bill Gates to that list. Uh, True, yes. His jobs. Um, I agree. Music industry, John Mayer, perhaps. Um, uh, once we have our minister, one of our ministers, yeah, um, our beloved Ibu Susi Bujia Suti also uh, mm -hmm. did spend a lot of time in higher education. Uh, what people often forget is that they are not necessarily the majority of the population. And okay, yeah. Yes, they are successful and yes, they do this without uh, college experience, but really uh, only a handful of people can pull that, really. Uh, if you look at the entire population, uh, most of people still go to college, most of them. Um, most of them gain access to the positions they're in right now, uh, good positions, comfortable positions, 
uh, via college with a minor exception. And the reason why these people stand out, it's because uh, I guess they're special, but I don't think they represent the general rule of uh, the recipe for success. Um, what people again often forget is that degree certificate, first of all, uh, is something that we'll carry through our life. And in one way or another, uh, it helps us to uh, give us access to certain areas, certain industries, uh, connect to certain people. Um, it's not necessarily the information we're buying with all those uh, money, really. Yes, actually. I agree. Not to mention uh, the whole learning experience that you can't do by yourself. All those years are something that we can't really develop on our own, uh, just by ourselves. I see. That really puts uh, the question in a very different perspective. You go to college or university not just to buy the information, but it's also to get the entire experience, the people that you can meet. Some people might argue I can meet them through other ways, but really college is one of the easiest ways that you can have access to this sort of experience and not to mention friendship, a social setting. I think that's also very important and something that students should keep in mind. Going to college doesn't mean you're just bringing home a degree or you're just studying. It's totally entering yourself into this culture and to broaden your perspective, right? I think that's very important, very insightful, Miss Nalia. I see, so there are lots of positive psychological um, effects that could help us grow and develop mm -hmm. as a student uh, in entering independence into a young adult. And I think, Miss Nalia, this is something that you really do um, specialize in, preparing students for the real world. Now, as a counselor, how do you guide students to find their passion or goal? Uh, more specifically, how does ICTA school do this? As a general rule, actually starting this year, we ask students to take this assessment, career assessment, what we call career direct. It's a very comprehensive assessment. Um, reports is the long one of the longest i've ever seen uh, compared to similar assessments and assess a lot of areas in one's life and not just career interests there's an assessment of personality there assessment of interest uh, assessment of values very important for long-term choice like career uh, as well as of course uh, reflecting on own skills now, uh, this is a very, very, what we call the Gen Z thing, uh, mm. as this is an online career assessment. Yes. Meaning, uh, student can do this uh, on their own uh, in their most comfortable time. Uh, sometimes when you come to a certain test center and you do your assessments, uh, reflecting about life in a brained environment, it can be pretty uh, daunting. It's yes, hard to it relax is. and yeah. to be yourself. Uh, here they can do this uh, in their own room, I guess, uh, by themselves and just be really, really honest about who they are. And that's just them and the computer really there. So they can fully uh, be fully free um, on being honest. And the result will be sent to them directly from the center. Yes. And this is a very, very, very well researched, well uh, processed, statistically speaking, uh, this career direct test. And so the student will have a copy of this as well as the school. And then we will schedule individual uh, sessions for the student and uh, their parents together with the school personnel to discuss the result and actively uh, process everything that we figured out about them to come up with career and major decisions. And from there, uh, then we'll take it to the next level, yeah, to help them to sort out 
what would be the subjects that they need to take in grade 11 uh, to match those career interests and majors. Of course, this needs to be tailored carefully, uh, considering the countries or the schools they probably aspire to attend, uh, even as early as they attend. And considering all factors, then we help them to make the most strategic decisions of subjects combinations that will work best for them uh, now and of course uh, for the future. For their future, <laughs> yes. I see, I think this is another great example as to why technology and people, the humans are also important. It's important to combine it. Technology is there to help us, to aid us, make things easier and efficient for us, but it does not cut the relevance of human interaction to really emotionally bond and just understand each other. There's something that, um, that's, that's something that technology can't do, right? That's why you, we need the combination. Even though we do certain tests and research digitally, we still, uh, it's still very important, right, to talk personally to our counselors, to our teachers, even to our family for proper guidance. As a counselor here at ICTIS, what are some crucial tips that you have for these in, uh, aspiring youths? at ICTIS and also even out there. Uh, what are some tips that you have for them? Okay, so the classic be true to yourself is classic for a reason. Uh, mm -hmm. Because it's true, I guess, uh, for all time. Uh, the more you know yourself, the more you being honest to yourself, um, the sooner you'll discover what your life process is. And therefore, the less regrets, I guess, you will have. Okay, Miss Ali, I think that's very, very inspiring. Be honest to yourself. Know yourself. If you don't know yourself, get to know yourself. Seek help. Seek guidance so that you know what's good for you. Because ultimately, this is your future. And you shouldn't use others as a pedestal or a measuring for you, for yourself, when you should be focusing on you because this is your future. Thank you so much, Ms. Nalia. This has been a wonderful uh, little chat with you. It was very, very um, inspiring. And I think it's very informative for children out there as well who are planning for their future. So thank you so much for your time. I hope that we can have another opportunity to talk. Perhaps we could, um, dance on the idea of studying abroad or locally i think that's also very informative for these children if they're trying to think oh should i study here at indonesia or at my country or should i try to broaden my horizons i think it's very um interesting and i think you would also have some very uh great tips for them most definitely valerie thank you for having me today yes thank you so much miss malia god bless you god bless so to conclude this episode, is college still worth it? The answer is yes, it is still worth it because you can't actually put a price on education. There's no such thing as a waste of time or money on education. There's no money that could buy that sort of experience and culture that could enrich you like how college could. That's why if you're ever considering on entering college or not entering college, you could think back about this and perhaps even tune back into our podcast to resettle your mind. This is Rachel Valerie Doe. Thank you so much for tuning in to our live talk.